Uh, thank, you, thank you very much. Um, perhaps before I answer your question, I just need to wish the Indaba well uh, in their meeting and uh, deliberations and apologize that I will not be there as I was part of the, those that were asked to be um, almost like the supporters uh, of this initiative. I will be on a 30-day retreat. Uh, I had planned to go there for my own um, spiritual fulfillment and to deepen my relationship with the Lord because the 30 day retreat is what they call individually guided retreat where you are helped to pray every day through the scriptures. But it is equally important to pray for this country, uh, particularly the year um, when we celebrate 100 years or remember 100 years of the Land Act, of, uh, uh, which displays a number of certificates, but also a year before uh, the elections uh, next year, we need to say to South Africans, let your vote count. And it is important as an Archbishop to start with prayer. And the title of this, um, mm -hmm. you know, like the first speech in the past time is this. Not many people in South Africa is however aware of what you expect that this document was directly first going to the first and then to the political world, and then as well as to the economic leader and to the tourists in our land. Now, my question is then, um, what um, is the question of maybe uh, what you do you want to address maybe or anything that you want to address or that you feel that that you feel that maybe you think that they are or maybe children of the Christ or the Christian Christ of the Lord? What do you think is the best you feel that role in such a particular? Yes, you're right. The statement that we issued um, what, uh, unfortunately was picked up as being addressed to the political leaders because there was Mangaul. But the statement was uh, initially addressed to ourselves as the faith community and the church leaders. We repented the fact that we are not as prophetic as we ought to be. And then we turned to the political leaders and decried the moral degeneration. And we then turned to the business uh, leaders, uh, particularly those that profess uh, the Christian faith, and said, Do you know that? when we talk about the economics, we're talking about the oikos nomos, which is uh, the, the rules of the household. And if we look at the rules of the household of faith, uh, Jesus spent a lot of time talking about greed, those that have the greed, talking about the uh, economic, socio-economic issues of his day. So we want them to be part and parcel of recreating this world so that we are not concerned about profits only but we say people matter yes profits are important but this planet is very important and um, let's work together uh, uh, to uphold the sanctity of each individual to respect uh, this planet but also to make money in order to give money to the development of this planet so we're saying to our uh, economic leaders uh, help us to live up uh, the faith. Well, the to the of this, uh, the of, um, the the I want to ask you a very specific to the 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 I want to ask you a very question concerning the meeting which has been now the 17th of January, where the church leaders um, invited each other and spoke about the whole problem of anxiety and the government structures in the meeting of the church. Can you say something now this is a meeting? About this meeting, if you have maybe the first period and the outcomes of this meeting, you maybe um, tell us what you think the delegates to make a good bargain and do about the outcomes of the meeting. 
Thank you. On the 17th of January, we met at the Vitz Business School and almost all the church leaders were present. Uh, we only received an apology from the Shembe churches, the Hanyani were there, um, the Evangelical Alliance, the SACC, uh, Methodists, Anglicans, I mean, Lutherans, you name them. They were all there. And we were looking at trying to find the DNA of Christian leaders before they could engage themselves adequately in interreligious um, uh, dialogues or interreligious witness in South Africa. Because we were decrying the fact that the National Religious Leaders Forum was technically hijacked uh, for partisan um, uh, reasons and we were saying we cannot be organized by a parliamentary subcommittee on religion or be organized by uh, the Commission on Religion at the Tuli House, but that we needed to, uh, one, uh, 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 define who we are as Christian leaders. What is our DNA? What is our reason for existence? And then two, uh, what is our theology in engaging at an interreligious uh, context. And then three, what are some of the practical programs that we could do as Christian leaders that will define ourselves and make us go into an interreligious context? One of them, for example, was to have a program from 2013 till 2016 that will uh, be like a Lenten study where we, we study together uh, within the uh, ecumenical body and we were talking about the possibility of adopting education as one of the key tools that could make all the church leaders um, in, interact with one another and then move from being church leaders and interact at an interfaith context but knowing who we are as Christian leaders because in the past we felt some of our leaders were really co-opted um, because they wanted to be closer to power and clo closer to influence. I want to ask you a lot of knowledge. Uh, what is the work of encouragement to the benefits of the environment? I want to really wish them well as they deliberate on the issues that are faced in South Africa. And I want to encourage the delegates to be very bold and courageous as Christian leaders and not to only make our gaze and look at the problems in South Africa, but look at some of those problems and say, what can we do together, particularly with the business people that we've invited that will be there, to say, throwing our hands into the sky and say the government is corrupt or somebody is corrupt, uh, is a part of the solution. Uh, but we cannot end there. We do need to put the solution on the table because South Africa belongs to all of us and we must make South Africa work. So I wish them well and I wish them strength and courage and I want them to own South Africa as people.